Okay, we'll, we'll call the order. Madam Clerk, can we have a roll call? Tom Duffy is excused. Stacy Hessel? Here. John Righeimer? Here. Brian Bissonnette? Chris Rusk? Here. You have a quorum. <laughs> All right. Stanford Flesh? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, uh, we have a certification of compliance with the open meeting law. This meeting has been noted for public and news media as required by Section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statute. All right, the, the meeting agenda is set. Any questions on that? Do we have to vote on that? No? Okay. Uh, now we're at public comments. Uh, see, we have Linda on the line. Is there anybody else? Uh, at this time, members of the public will be given the opportunity to address the committee. Please adhere to the following when addressing the committee. Keep your comments limited to three minutes or less. Comments should be directed at the committee, not individual members. The committee cannot respond to the comments during this time. And if you're able, if not, she's online, please sign in. Linda, it's you, it's on you. you have Thank you. I didn't wish to be recognized. Oh, okay. Anybody else for Pope? Nobody else online, right? All right, move on to approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Any questions or do we have a motion? I'll motion to approve. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. Aye. Anybody aye. opposed? Minutes are approved. Do we have somebody here from the Sawyer County Agricultural Fair Association for a report? There's not, and he didn't send one to me. Okay. University, then we'll move on to the University of Wisconsin Extension Department report. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna um you out this Thank you. specific report from Food Wise. Last time I did a quarterly report for um, the university uh, or from the other educators. And so this time around, I just wanted to give you what Bridget has prepared for the year end for Food Wise. So it's just a nice recap of the work that Food Wise in particular does. As a reminder, Food Wise is um, nothing that you specifically pay for in the contract, but it's kind of I always say it's like the Coles coupon. It's the cash back, a little extra um, that comes to the county. So um, I think it's a nice summary of what she um, and her team, her um, Kim and, and Bridget have worked on. So um, that's for you. I also wanted to let you know that um, the university has hired a new, um, it's a new position. So let me get it right. It's the Agriculture Water Quality Program. Um, outreach specialist, Kelsey Highland, and she will be working with um, farmers and conservation professionals, um, crop advisors, all those folks. She, for the Northwest part of um, Wisconsin, but she is, we made space for her over in the Burnett County office. So um, she won't be down in Madison. So we're excited about that, that there'll be someone a little closer to us. And I think she'll be a great resource for Sawyer County too. So um, I'll get you her information so you can just stick it in the minutes. Is that right? Kelsey Highland is her name. Um, and that's what I have for you. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Moving on, Hayward Lakes Visitors and Convention Bureau. Hey, Sherry Beckman here, and I did submit a report. So I um, <clears throat> just want to let you know that um, Tourism Secret Secretary designee Ann Sayers and her staff are going to be here for Berkey weekend, and I'm going to be running around with her again this year. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, we are going to go to Green Bay on March 12th through the 15th for the Governor's Conference on Tourism. And then I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Travel Green program, but that's been revitalized. So um, any members or any resorts or anything that are Travel Green, they're resource by right now. So that's kind of popular. Um, Mad Dog and Merrill are going to be here during Berkey. Um, Madison Days. I know I saw Stacy was just in Madison for some part of the North. Part of the north. Um, so I go down on March 7th, and that is, um, we represent Destinations Wisconsin, 
Wisconsin Lodging and Hotel Association, and then different destinations. So we are excited about that. And can I go right to their um, offices? And sometimes they like to see us in their turf. So, and we have some new ones we're going to be meeting. So excited about that. Um, and then this this meeting every year, I've been trying to talk about the Northwest ITBEC, um, which we're working on a new name. So hopefully by in the next six months, we'll have a new name. I think we're looking at Northwest Wisconsin just for brand recognition instead of ITBEC. It stands for International Trade, Business, and Economic Council, which is the Wisconsin Counties Association that supports that. But it's a mouthful and people don't understand it. And, and we're the tourism branch of that little piece. So um, anyway, so the county actually pays $3,000 every year to be a member of that. And then you guys appoint, you have been appointing me for 15 years or something. But um, <clears throat> you can pick whoever you want to be your representative. And then we meet monthly. And then we take, we each take that $3,000, which is, it's almost 40000 we have a year. Um, and then we work together to spend it. So that's kind of what's on here. Um, we distribute, we have a couple maps. We have an ATV Snowyville map, and we also have a silent sport vacation guide. So we distribute that for about 5,000, and then printing those publications is about 16,000. Um, then we advertise snowmobiling, ATVing. We have some print ads. Um, the Department of Tourism has some print materials that we we get in which is really nice because we can get a full page um, advertising northwest wisconsin which is out of reach for most of us counties on our own but um, doing it all together is really nice um, we do some social media we do blogging every month um, google adwords we have to pay for some of those words to so people can find us department of tourism co-op ads the travel wisconsin guide um, the governor's fishing opener, we took that over last year. Um, so we put a little, we put thousand dollars towards whatever community is going to get to host that. We'll be hosting the 60th, which is not three more years. Um, and then just some general kind of ties up the balance sheet. Um, did you have a question? No. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, the fishing opener will be in the Phillips area this year, Park Falls. Um, and with the silent sport guide, we're just doing the finishing touches on that so that hopefully will be printed and ready to go for spring. And then the ATV Stoneville map will be reprinted this fall, 2023. Normally we do every other year, but um, I think the pandemic just got us all, you know, so we're not on a very good schedule, but usually we do each publication every other year. So, but this year we're going to land with both of them this year and we have the money because we just moved, rolled it over um and then the other big thing that i've been working on is that destination branding study which is um very exciting and they're collecting all the data right now and they've been sending me little um updates and people are answering it and so i'm really happy that people are willing to take that 15 minute survey um oh and i didn't know if you could click on that commercial lynn um, I don't control I think. Yeah, you just look at this is our new winter. Our new the winter 60 seconds. Mm. Where's this being played? Winter is upon us, and there are hosts of fun activities to get you outside and play in the woods. Experience a winter family adventure like never before when you vacation in Hayward, Wisconsin, with deep snow and blue skies and 600 miles of blue snowmobile trails and 250 kilometers of blue Nordic ski trails. Hayward Lakes is an outdoor wonderland. Whether you come to cross country ski on world class skiing trails, pedal your way through the forest on your winter fat bike, snowshoe on nature trail, or just relax and get away from it all, Hayward is waiting for you this winter. Hop on your snowmobile and tackle twists and turns that lead you through rolling hills and valleys. Find winter lodging availability, special events, current trail and snow conditions, view the weekly outdoor report, and so much more on HaywardLakes.com. Download a free vacation guide and trailers at HaywardLakes.com. Woods, Warner, world class events. That looks great. Well, where is that place? So it plays a whole bunch of different places. Um, most recently, we did um, 
that we sponsored um, the international ski race that the Berkey was involved in. So we were there. We'll be we'll be running this during the Berkey Live. Um, I have it down in is it Minneapolis, Eau Claire, um, Duluth. It's in Duluth as well. And it plays on TV or mm -hmm. this is fantastic. Yeah. Does um uh will you do one for like summer sports too or yes so this was um this is it, it i know it's only 60 seconds but i'm telling you it was a lot of hours <laughs> you know we had to get well, less is more i think it's great we had to get all the actors and all of us everybody lined up we get they come and they film and they you know so this was a two-year project to get you know 60 second commercial wow. <laughs> um so what was the question? Sorry. Uh, well, will there be one for summer? Yes. Yes. So yes, he's hopefully going to have that done by May first. Fantastic. Yes. And does the sh this is separate, but does the show Discover Wisconsin they ever come up here or they do? It's they do. about forty five thousand dollars. Oh, you have to pay them for yeah. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we have yes, we we the last time we had them, we did an ATV snowmobile. Has that been a good return when you do that with them? Um, it's really hard to gauge because you know you know how many people are supposed to be watching the show um it's so much money that we usually have to find some kind of partnership um you know yeah we just don't know do you have to pay uh John Gillespie when he comes up here no he he loves to come here and we don't pay him oh good okay he's, he's got up here a, a lot, good relationship so. with Pete Maynard yeah. and, and they're they're here fishing all the time okay so that's not like paying I don't him pay, to do I don't pay John oh good it. excellent Chip. Can I, follow, yeah. can I follow up on Heart of the North? Days? Absolutely. So we were at Heart of the North Days in Madison last Thursday, representing Sawyer, Barron, Washburn, and Rust counties. And we did a roundtable um, with the legislators. We invited every legislator, uh, state and assembly. And then the Department of Tourism actually came there. And so we had um, Secretary Designee uh, Ann Sayers there, and then her staff. And then we had about 20 people. We had the biggest uh, awesome. legislative both so we had to um we promoted the area i unfortunately had to read about washburn county instead of sawyer oh <laughs> caitlin didn't show up so oh i had to but i did promote the um fishing opener in in park falls and then talked about yeah you know, all the different things in the area but it was good we had them each every person that spoke had to hold the fish huh. so it, was <laughs> it was good past the uh, good. indian stick right it was, was yeah, good that was awesome so uh, tourism, the conversation, topic of conversation is make sure that you think of tourism when you're writing or co-sponsoring bills, because all money trickles up north. I mean, the, every road leads up north and it all the money goes through the state. And so we really pounded that and then thank them for Julie Fox. She's our regional rep for uh, the Department of Tourism. Mm -hmm. And so it was great. It was a great experience and it was great to be on both sides of it. Thank you so much. And then this is just wrapping up some of the free PR that we got in the last couple months. And that's it. We'll keep up the good work. Thank you. Love the commercial. Next, Northwest Regional Planning Commission report. Nobody? Going once, going twice. Okay. Economic Development Corporation report. Good morning, everybody. I'm online today. Sorry about that. Awesome. Um, okay, so uh, just to give a little update, um, we had um, we submitted the Wisconsin Economic Development Vibrant Spaces Grant um, and worked together with with uh, Jim Nets and Chris Ruckdashel and um, Jim Miller to get that in. Uh, basically, looking at the the France and Bank parking lot to make some improvements there. Uh, basically, would make the the monies go further because there's money available. And then we were planning on doing the project anyway, so it worked out that way. Uh, so it's submitted, and thank you to everybody that was involved. Um, and then, as Stacy had mentioned earlier, uh, we did have a representation go to the Heart of the North Legislative Days uh, and speak on different economic development. Um, issues and and then of course tourism issues but the pictures that I saw were really great um, our house has been a little bit riddled with some sickness going around of course so um, wasn't able to attend myself um, we did uh, over the last uh, month here finalize and develop some committee our committees and we have four committees uh, the housing committee broadband marketing and events and workforce training and education committees 
Um, so I'll kind of break down a couple of things that we're working on within those committees. Um, in our housing committee, uh, we did submit that home homes grant that we um, back in October. Um, the update is that we do have a call today with Brett Gerber to discuss um, some pot some potential sites, um, and then we should be moving on on some of on um, those opportunities or options um, that Impact at Seven would be of interested in. So, the update there is that there's movement. And we'll give you more updates as they come. <laughs> um, the next is um, our broadband committee. Um, there's a let's see here. There's a um, a workshop today uh, online. It's about broadband equity ex access and deployment for funding for Wisconsin counties and and tribes. A, a webinar at noon. Um, so we'll attend that and see how it can help us and you know serve our community better. Um, some of the marketing and events that we're doing, um, we do partner with the market with the Northern Nerd is uh, Dalton Hessel is our wonderful marketing person and he has been doing great. Uh, he's been doing some interviews with local businesses. Uh, you may have seen his podcast on Coop's Pizza or Simply Sweet Cookies. Um, it's just really awesome to see um, him doing that work and then promoting these businesses. So we do we are looking at um, branching out throughout the rest of the community or the county as well to future businesses, not just in Hayward. Um, but it's really great to see that happening. Um, we have um, two other events on the docket, we'll say. Um, we did have our first business boost. Unfortunately, it had to be rescheduled because Andy Donahue, who's with the um, Small Business Development uh, Center, did have a little bit of a fender bender that morning. He's totally safe, but the it was a really snowy Friday anyway. <laughs> um, so we did have five people signed up, which was great because it seems like people are interested and they're, re they're rescheduled. Um, and so we're looking forward to that. Um, the next one will be on Monday, the 27th of February. Um, and finalizing the place, which would be in winter, winter depot. Um, the third one will be back at the chamber um, and here at Visitors Bureau uh, Conference Center, which will be March 16th. Okay, <clears throat> the next one would be our workforce and training and education committee. And we, we met on Friday and it was the first time meeting. So it's nice to have our little groups that we're breaking out into and kind of um, working on more specific, um, you know, projects, I guess. Um, but one we've learned about um, working with Manpower, which is a company that um, provides, you know, employment and um, mm -hmm. basically looking at spreading the word about funding for on the job training and work work experience. So there is money available for people who are going to be hiring people. Either they can have a work experience where they get paid up to $7,200 through Manpower, or they can work um, with the employer and get paid half of their training like basically there there's um um there's basically you get to follow a formula of sorts but it's really out there and one of the lady that we met with her name is missy um and she said that basically it seems like it's too good to be true and she loses some people for that reason um but it's not <laughs> so we're going to be working on figuring out how to um let our local employers know about this so they can take advantage of it so um, we are also meeting with the Winter Chamber uh, in the next week or so to see about how we can um, better work with the southern part of the county uh, in economic development. And also I've been working on investor relations and fundraising. So that's a, um, that's my report for today. And if any have, if he has any questions, let me know. Excellent. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Next is um, library updates. Uh, Winter is on the end line. No, Donna, Donna's out of town. Right. We'll go Hayward. Okay. Um, we have a lot going on in February around Valentine's Day, of course. Um, one thing that, well, a couple of things we're doing. Uh, we have a special workshop with someone who hand makes cards. This is nothing new, but it's really nice because we're making cards for people who live at Aspen Acres. So I'm, that's a nice community thing to do. And on Valentine's Day, we usually do, and we will this year, food for fines. So if someone brings in canned goods or anything non-perishable, we will wipe out any library fines that they have um, on Hayward Library materials. We can't do it for other libraries. And we are exploring the possibility of going fine free just 
um, partly because that is what is happening across the country, especially in Wisconsin, in, in order to allow people who don't have the funds to come to the library. And I have mixed feelings about it. I'll talk more about it when I get a little bit closer, but um, we have always been to work backwards to help people work out fines. But I know there's a stigma, there's a fear of coming back in if money is owed and we don't want that. Um, I am on a committee to explore the feasibility of combining three library systems in an order to provide faster, better service and also to save on dollars. We're gonna explore that to see if that will, will actually happen. And um, what else have I got here? We still are lending out the wireless hotspots. That's gonna be a program that will only grow for people who are in the position of not having- good. They take those with them. Yeah. Yeah, they can actually, actually return them. them yeah, that's, <laughs> we haven't had, we've had good luck so far. And until March 1st, we're still handing out free Wisconsin State Park passes. And I know this is a really odd time of the year for them to do this program, but they can use the passes till the end of the year. It's just, we can't hand any more out after March 1st. But the state is planning on expanding the program. I think I mentioned that a few months ago. But I think what they'll do is have libraries and other communities actually purchase a certain number of state park passes and for people to check out. But then there's, that's a drain on our finances. So we'll have to work something out with that. Um, we have... A, Local part-time local author is working with a new business owner in Hayward to raise the money for the library through the sales of her book. The um, the owner of the shop isn't taking any money at all from the book sales, so they're all coming to the library. So that's another nice nice um, partnership. And we just always have a lot going on. Oh, the last thing I wanted to point out is Jerry Wright is grooming. If he hasn't done it yet, he's going to groom the trail around the pond that connects with the hospital trails. So people can walk and ride if they want to, snowshoe. So Good. that's it. Uh, on the fine piece, how much might you be writing off if you waived all that? That's what I am going to delve into. Um, I've been holding out quite honestly because, you know, worrying about funding. Um, but most of the libraries in our system have already gone fine. And do you even advertise that, right? I mean, I guess you don't, right? You keep it silent, but you're not charging anybody, I guess. Because if you make the announcement, it's like, come take, it's like a free store then at that point. <laughs> Valentine's Day. You were, you were talking about doing a fine free. Like oh, if we go late dues, free. yeah. If you if you did go that route, I mean are we talking thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars? What are you talking? A thousand. Okay. A couple thousand. Well still, yeah. So how do you make up that revenue? I'm gonna yeah, exactly. I have to make sure that we can do that. And that's why I have not joined in with the bulk of the libraries. So I'll do a study and, and come up with some numbers and share them. Excellent. All right, moving on, motorized trail and non-motorized trail report. There's non-motorized, what's that, the Berkey stuff? Mm -hmm. I don't have anything other than the Berkey's coming up, what, a couple weeks? Yeah. Yeah. Motorized trail. I apologize, I don't have a report ready, but um, I finally got out over this weekend to read the trail counters that I have. I have not had time to download the data and put it into a program and analyze it and produce reports. <laughs> um, I've, I've, I, they're located throughout the county. Several were buried from the snowstorm. It took me a while to get to them. I still have one that I haven't even checked because it's in a very remote. Um, southeast corner of the county location and and i suspected 
probably is buried and reading nothing. But um, I, I will produce a report next month for everyone that should cover pretty much the whole season. Um, of course, everyone sees the amount of sled traffic that we have up here. It's uh, substantial. Trails are in great condition. They still need a lot of work from the storm cleanup, but they're open. And a lot of people are here <laughs> riding. I have witnessed large groups myself um, over this weekend. I, I probably had five or six groups of 20 sleds, you know, behind me or past me when I was, uh, so there, it's, it's just. Uh, so anecdotally, it's maybe better than I would have thought with the tough early season we had. It seems that way. Um, the, you know, the trails in the southern part of the state were recently opened. And so I kind of watched that because usually we have a little dip. If you can ride at your home down in southern Wisconsin, then you're not coming up here. But we, for some reason, attract the Iowa crowd of snowmobilers. And we, we just have trailers full of sleds coming up here. And they're all from Iowa. I don't know what the big That's attraction great. is. Yeah, so I'm not arguing about it. I right. just, uh, but there's a there's a lot of out of state people, and I think I learned that 50 percent of our area comes from within the state, from the within state. the state. Yep, it's over 50. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, some so of those Iowa communities kind of consider themselves part of. I mean, they kind of attract themselves to Minneapolis. So I guess it's just another skip up. Right. Right. Um, Andy's not here, but is there any update on, um, uh, you know, the the costs of, from the well, state of, of getting compensated or not? Yes, I last Thursday I went over to St. Germain and attended the Governor's Snowmobile Rec Council meeting, so I could be part of that. And they did release a million dollars in funding, but there are 27 counties that that suffered damage now a lot of those counties didn't suffer enough damage to really register. Uh, we did, and it's going to be ongoing, and we're putting together figures. The DNR just uh, put out a storm damage uh, funding application that's due back to them by March 1st, so we'll apply. I'm going to be meeting with uh, Greg Peterson about that early this week. I haven't He's, he's probably emailed me while I'm sitting here, but uh, we'll put some figures together as best we can and uh, put an application in and hopefully get some funding to cover our costs. So it, not out of the woods yet, so to speak, but it sounds like it's kind of moving in the right direction. Right? It is. Good. It is. Excellent. Good to hear. Anything else? No. All right. Um, well, Andy's not here, so I don't know if there's any broadband update or anybody want to say anything about broadband. We will move on. Historical Society. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Hey. Uh, it's kind of our slow time of year. Uh, we're open one day a week, uh, just Thursdays from 10 to 2. And if the weather's bad, the volunteer usually doesn't get there. Uh, we have our quarterly meetings at the library. This last one was Hazel John Jack talking about Boylan School, the one room school and that's open to the public. Our fundraiser that Ashton Strand, a high school student did for us is now up to just over $26,000. Wow. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and that's about it for and then in the in the spring winter spring summer are you guys open more than that one day or is it just that yeah one? we're open uh four days a week oh, okay um so sawyer county stopped funding according to our records this historical society in 2015. do you know why Did, yeah. are you guys that free or? yeah i know why uh a gentleman from eau claire who none of us know died and left us fifty thousand okay. dollars and the county said we didn't need any more money. But do you, I mean, like, what is your operational costs? And are you, do you have everything paid for and are just going off operational costs? Yeah, we keep up. I think we, 
still have about sixty thousand dollars no wow okay because the fundraiser we just had mm -hmm. the only other fundraisers we have are ways of dues donations uh sometimes they're okay like last week somebody left a hundred dollar bill in the donation jar and then we do parking for the lumberjack show mm -hmm. your yeah, efforts are commendable that's awesome so you feel like you're sustaining without county funds mm -hmm. okay and then also how do we get on the list for being notified for historical society events um usually you're a member oh you become a member and then you yeah. get notified and that's cheap okay or if you wanted to just also on uh on the radio on the what's the show before our quarterly meetings i go on the radio and announce it we usually not always get it sometimes get it in the newspaper okay and then we sit like i say to the members we send out a, a newsletter okay is there a an meeting room calendar too oh okay we've got on our the library's meeting room calendar yeah. So we have you on the on the schedule monthly for our meetings here. Is there any way that we could be provided a schedule list for the year, or is that not available? We don't. Our next, you know, our next uh, open meeting, which we do every three months, we don't know who the speaker is yet. But our, it's always the fourth Thursday of the month, and we just had one in january so it's every that meeting at the library is every three months the fourth thursday of the month okay although the one in july won't be at the library it will be in helmet conjunction with the stone lake historical society at their uh town hall okay by the where their historical society is we're having a joint you know speaker and author and i can't remember her name and like i say the april meeting we don't have anybody yet well, you thank you for coming to this meeting though yeah. we appreciate the update mm -hmm. thank you i used to come to all the meetings but you quit sending me the uh agenda so you have to be a member no <laughs> <laughs> i think you should get on my email list oh. How do you spell your last name? I'll double check you, but I think you're still there. F E R B U S O N. Yep, I think you are. Let's check the email before you leave today. Well, next okay. well, thanks for coming. Any future agenda items that need to be brought up? Any um, comments or reports, correspondence from from meetings? I do have a question. Yep. I don't know if this is the right time. Is anybody aware of um, our Sawyer County repre representative on the library board had mentioned that he thought he was going to be moving? Correct. And I wondered if any discussion had taken place yet on who will. That I think will be the oh, chairman who yes, will yes. decide oh. that. Yeah. And how okay. the new person's appointed if he should be. So you have to. Wait, so yeah. that's probably Mayish no, or anything. Okay. Well, he's going to be here till June. June. Oh, June. Okay, even better. All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Jim, what is your